the molecules. And in this particular case, we have to use what is known as a born op. We typically use what's known as the born oppenheimer approximation. So for molecules, your total energy is just the sum of the translational kinetic energy and the relative energy. Just like any multiple multi-particle problem, we just separate out there. It could be motion for the center of mass right away. That's, we're only interested in the motion, the internal motion of the molecule itself. So in other words, so KCM here's a translational energy of the molecule. What we call the energy of the molecule, that's really just the relative energy of the particles within the molecule. Okay? So what does that relative energy represent? That represents the energy of the electrons and the, re the, the relative energy of the particles within the molecules, so the electrons and the nuclei. Okay? The Born-Oppenheimer approximation, also known as an adiabatic approximation, we use that to determine that relative energy. From now on, we say energy of the molecule, that's what we really mean, okay? unless we explicitly want to include the translational kinetic energy. All right, so the electronic energy is usually calculated separately from the energy due to the motion of the nuclei. And the reason for that is the electrons move so much faster than the nuclei. So this is the basic idea in the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. Since your electrons move so much faster than the nuclei, what we can do is we can imagine taking a snapshot of your molecule so your your nuclei are fixed, okay? So nuclear coordinates are fixed, Q sub n. And then we write an approximate Schrodinger equation now, taking those nuclei, nuclear coordinates as fixed. So we just have an a Schrodinger equation that depends on the coordinates of the electron. So we just solve for the wave function for the electrons. And when we do that, we get a value for the electronic energy, okay? So your wave function, we say, depends parametrically on the nuclear coordinates. Parametrically, by that we mean okay, it will it, it depends whatever whatever nuclear coordinates we choose. But for any particular instance, we fix that value of your nuclear coordinates. So it really is just dep dependent on the electronic coordinates for a given molecular geometry. So for a given snapshot of your molecule, your wave function depends on the uh, electronic coordinates. And your electronic energy, okay, the allowed electronic energies that you calculate when you solve your Schrodinger equation will depend on what your nuclear coordinates are, okay? We can define now what we call the molecular potential energy, U as a function of Q sub n, as the potential energy of interaction among the nuclei, okay? So, for example, in, let's say you have H2. What, what would be the potential energy of interaction between the two nuclei? 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Charge of the pos one nucleus is positive E. The charge of the other nucleus is positive E divided by R, the distance between the two nuclei. Right? So if R is the distance between the, the two nuclei of an H2 molecule, this would be your... Uh, this would be your potential energy for the interaction between the nuclei. Now, if you have more than one, uh, more than two nuclei, then you have to sum it all over all the possible pairings. Right? So, the molecular potential energy is just the potential energy of, of interaction among the nuclei plus the electronic energy that you calculated for that one particular position, for that one particular snapshot. Okay, so. Each of these potential energy curves, you generate a curve basically, okay? Potential energy, molecular potential energy versus nuclear coordinates. Each of that is called a potential energy curve if, it, if, it, if you just have one variable like R, the distance between two nuclei. If you have a polyatomic molecule, you can have more than one variable. So the, the, the potential energy is called a potential energy surface, okay? Instead of a potential energy curve. So each one of those, that you calculate, you get a series of these the values, right, for each set of nuclear coordinates. So each one of those is would refer to what we call is referred to as an electronic state. Okay. So uh, 
Why is it called the molecular potential energy? Because we, when we solve for these electronic energies, what are we doing? We're fixing the location of the nuclei, right? So the kinetic energy of the nucleus at each of these of the nuclei at each of these positions we're assuming to be zero. So you can think of the whole thing as this molecular potential as the potential energy. So that's one way of thinking about it. And when we do that, you get curves that look like this. You get a series of curves. Okay, 